Uh, so, uh, my name is Karol Gugawa, I'm from Ant Micro, and today I would like to say a few words about SymbiFlow and generating architecture definition uh, uh, in SymbiFlow from Verilog models. So, this is how SymbiFlow uh, looks like. Basically, SymbiFlow is an end to end flow. Uh, allowing you to generate uh, uh, routing files, bitstream files from uh, Verilog. Uh, what is important, SymbiFlow actually combines a lot of tools, a lot of uh, tools that uh, are maintained, are owned by some other uh, projects. Uh, SymbiFlow does not own most of the projects used uh, uh, in this tool chain. Um, uh, one of those projects we use in SymbiFlow uh, is a place and route to uh, called Verilog to routing. Uh, we actually, uh, in this presentation, I will actually use VTR, which stands for Verilog to routing. This is this project for uh, uh, creating a tool which can uh, route designs from Verilog to, 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 root, uh, to route the designs. Uh, or VPR, which stands from Versatile Place and Route. Uh, this is exactly the name of this tool used here. Um, uh, so this tool is developed by being developed by University of Toronto, um, and uh, we in SymbiFlow actually work with them to provide um, support for uh, real-life uh, FPGA devices. Uh, so uh, to to um, be able to use this tool to route design for uh, devices that we actually use on a daily basis. Um, so, besides contributing to the tool itself, we had to prepare uh, architecture definitions. Uh, we had to prepare a set of files, set of uh, description files that we, that we provide to this tool uh, so it can take a design and route it. And for that, we actually have a um, separate repository. We called it SymbiFlow Architecture Definitions. And there, we mostly develop uh, the stuff uh, that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so. How do you actually describe architecture for uh, Verilog to routing? So Verilog to routing uses XML files to describe the whole architecture. Um, there are two types of uh, XML files, architecture XML and routing resource. Uh, routing resource, as the name suggests, uh, describes the connection between uh, logic blocks, uh, more complex logic blocks, and how they uh, talk to each other, uh, how they are connected, what are the delays and so on. I'm not going to focus on this part today. I'm going to focus on architecture XML files. Uh, and those files uh, actually describe how the uh, FPGA device looks inside, how, uh, how the logic blocks are, uh, are designed, how they are uh, composed, from, from which elements they are composed, and so on. Um, this file, is, has two main parts. Like uh, one part is a model XML file, and the second part is a physical block type uh, XML file. Um, <clears throat> in SymbiFlow, we call them in this uh, in this way, like uh, some uh, basic uh, element name, model XML, element name, PB type XML, and for routing graph, it's a model name. Uh, uh, routing graph. Uh, all of those files are then combined and then provide, I mean, those files are combined and provide to the tool. So let's take a look on model XML, just, you know, a very short brief introduction of those files so you have an idea what do they actually describe and why are they used and how they are used. Uh, so model XML files, they um, define uh, custom primitives of an FPGA device. Uh, VPR can handle like generic types, like input outputs uh, or constants or something like that, but most of the FPGA devices uh, have very, very custom things, like uh, from uh, DSP blocks to some even uh, lookup tables or, or uh, complex blocks. Um, so um, this file actually describes quite a high-level definition of, of, a, of a custom primitive. Uh, so it defined ports, it defined port-to-clock relations or combination of the uh, relations between the ports. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, the second type of files we uh, will discuss today um, is a physical block type. 
XML file, and that one is way more complicated than um, than uh, model XML. That one describes the actual um, architecture, the actual um, design of FPGA. Uh, so it could be really, really, really complicated. It may uh, one PB type may include other PB types, and so on and so on. Uh, it defines, of course, specifies uh, the exact inputs and outputs, the uh, width, uh, it defines timings, and it defines internal connection, and so on and so on. Uh, and those files can be really, really uh, complicated. Um, here you can see a comparison of uh, model and physical block type. So as you can see, model just defines uh, inputs, outputs, a name, and uh, relations. Uh, this model doesn't define any clock uh, relations, just a combination of relations between inputs and outputs. Uh, here we have a corresponding uh, PB type, so as you can see this PB type uh, defines the width of those ports, uh, defines uh, uh, delays between those ports, and also uh, some additional info required for the two to be able to place and route uh, the design. <coughs> so those two files combined create uh, architecture XML with some uh, other additional info, but just not to introduce uh, too much compl complexity in this presentation, we'll focus on, on that one. Um, <coughs> so, as I said, we have uh, a special repository uh, to, to handle architecture definitions in SimbiFlow project, and generating those two files and, you know, combining them together uh, to create one architecture XML file is the most the biggest part of this repository of architecture definition definitions repository. So uh, the whole flow, the whole simply flow, is a little bit more complicated than I just you know provided. Uh, so we we do a lot of other things to, to uh, generate the whole design, to generate the the, the whole uh, uh, the resulting files. Uh, but let's zoom in to oh, it's kind of. Uh, pixelish, but let's zoom to, to this uh, XML uh, part. As we can see, we have like a PB type, we have model, then we combine that to uh, to get an architecture XML with, along with routing graph, we provide that to VPR, and then given a belief generated with Yosis from a user of Verilog, we are able to uh, pack, place, and route the design. So the question is how to get those. Yeah, because uh, how to how to get uh, those definitions? So of course, uh, those are text files. Those are XMLs. So we can basically write, write them. But writing XML sucks. Why? Because those files are really really complicated, uh, and it's very easy to um, to make a bug inside. Uh, there are different types of bugs. First is like you mess up something, and VPR will tell you like this is incorrect, the connections are not, you know, uh, complete or something like that. Those are easy to actually fix, but often you can introduce very, very tricky bug, like everything is correct, every, every single connection is correct, but for example, timing is incorrect. So VPR will manage to pack, place, and route the design. Uh, it will say, okay, timings are met, but of course, incorrect timings are met. Or you may mess up with the connection inside, like connect uh, loot outputs to incorrect uh, flip-flops or something like that. So in the end, you will have your design placed and routed, but it would not, it would not work on, on, on our actual hardware. Um, <clears throat> so writing XML is really, really uh, painful, and we don't want to do that. So let's take a look at the flow, at the whole flow again. And in the flow, we can see that we have a, a simulation file, simulation Verilog files. We use them to... Uh, in testing to verify if the uh, placed and routed design is correct. So for that we use your form of verification. Uh, and also we use those files uh, to um, uh, in, in post place and route simulations. So let's, let, let's take a closer look on the simulation Verilog file. Uh, those are the places actually where, where they are in the whole uh, flow. So let's take a look on a closer look on those files. So this is uh, an example from from test suite. Uh, it defines DSP combination now with some basic uh, logic inside. So what data do we have here? It defines ports, direction, and types. 
uh, defines, actually this one does not define any clock, but in general they, they define uh, port to clock relations and port to port combination of connections. So basically this is the exact info that we define in uh, model files, for example. Yeah? So why not use those files to generate XMLs and do not write them by hand? You know, computers are way better uh, at writing files than humans. Yeah? So why not use that? And actually, we do that. We have a part of a, of a flow that is responsible for uh, generating the XML files from Verilog files. And if we take a closer look, this is what V2X does. And how does it work? It combines uh, quite a few uh, scripts and tools. So first of all, it uses Yosis to pass this file, to pass those uh, Verilog files. It doesn't have to be one file, it may be a set of file, but we use Yosis for that. And Yosis JSON backend to generate a JSON file. Then we read this JSON file with uh, a few Python scripts and use those Python scripts to uh, basically generate PB type and model files. Uh, two more most important scripts are listed here, like Verilog to model and Verilog to PB type. Of course, there is a uh, quite a few more scripts in the uh, in this flow. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so what actually V two X uh, provides? Uh, so it can do quite a lot of, uh, a lot of things. Uh, it can first of all figure out that we are dealing with black box. So black box is a definition of uh, some uh, some some. Uh, primitive block in an FPGA, uh, or more complex blocks like, for example, a uh, uh, block that contains other black boxes and, and so on. It can infer clock and combinational paths, so basically we get that info. It infers Blyth annotations. Blyth annotations are required for uh, VPR to, to figure out that input from a, a synthesis tool uh, should be, how should be treated, uh, input from a synthesis tool, how it should be placed and routed uh, in the architecture designs. Uh, it can also infer timing definitions and pack pattern. Timing definitions are defined uh, with uh, very log attributes. Pack patterns may be defined with very log attributes or inferred automatically. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look how this process looks like. So this is the same example from, uh, from the previous part. We have this DSP combination now. Uh, and this is how model XMO is generated with uh, the tool from this file. Uh, that one, uh, when I was talking about uh, delay uh, and timing, uh, timing constants uh, inference, uh, timings are defined in that way, uh, as you can see here, as, as uh, very low attributes. Um, here we can see how the PB type is generated. This example is way more complicated. For, first of all, that one uses quite a few other types. And uh, it combines some, uh, uh, it, it defines some pack patterns and, and uh, some other blocks connected to each other. Uh, this, this file, this XML file here, this listing here, is way too uh, wide to fit into this, uh, into this slide. Actually, we have to cut it a little bit to, uh, to show you at least a part of it. Uh, this file is really, really complicated and it's not the most complicated file you can get when you define FPGA architecture. So here you can see what's the problem with defining those. <clears throat> okay, so um, what else do we have with V2X? Uh, first of all, we have a really, really nice test suite. Um, the, when we were actually developing the, the V2X flow, uh, we asked ourselves how to um, how to properly test uh, the architectures defined, uh, the, the architecture file defined, uh, the architecture files generated with V2X. So the easiest way is actually create a, a virtual FPGA architecture uh, from those files, uh, then use the input Verilog files to synthesize uh, a design and try to place and route it with this, uh, in, in this architecture. Yeah? So basically it should fit, like theoretically it should fit like one-to-one -one into the architecture. So if we can ask VPR uh, to use the generated architecture and try to place and route the design from which the architecture was defined and that one succeeds, it means that everything is okay, that we generate something that is possible, something that is usable and 
uh, it's okay. So basically, that's how it works. That's how that's uh, that's how uh, the test suite uh, is implemented. Um, for testing, we actually use uh, VTR examples from VTR tutorials. Um, so they cover quite a lot of different cases, like from very simple. Uh, flip-flops to very complicated, like flip-flops with flutes with something, something like a, a virtual COB uh, you can find in modern FPGA uh, chips. Um, and recently we moved that to a separate repo. We excluded that from a... Uh, uh, it's not tightly coupled with, with the whole uh, SIMB flow. Uh, flow uh, now it's a Python package, so basically you can do something like pip install uh, and provide a GitHub address uh, to to get this this tool on your machine and just play around with it. So if you want to define uh, like a new architecture for a new device, you can just play with it and try to uh, try to do that. Um, so what's next? Um, First thing is to finish uh, V2X extraction from, from the main repo, uh, because as I said, we have the code uh, extracted, you can use it. Uh, we have to right now extract the rest of the stuff, uh, which is testing suite, and uh, create a you know, proper continuous integration stuff, and, and ensure that uh, everything that, was, that is used in uh, Arch devs can be used separately as a standalone tool. Uh, the next goal is to um, is to implement the whole uh, Artex 7 architecture to be generated from Verilog files in SimbiFlow uh, and SimbiFlow uh, uh, architecture definition uh, flow. Um, next thing related, actually, those two will be done probably together. Is to use SDF, which is it stands for uh, standard delay format. Uh, timing information to be injected into the architecture files automatically by V2X during the generation. And of course, never ending task improve Verilog models for simulations and verification. Um, so that's all. Thanks. So just looking at the way that um, HDL design is going in general, have you thought about an approach that would get a lot of the benefits but would use something like a Python definition of the architecture? Uh, and that would generate the XML, but that could also generate Verilog as another output format. So you could still get the, the testing and the simulation benefits of Verilog while perhaps moving on to something a bit newer with better metaprogramming and that kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. I mean, the... The, the easiest approach for that would be to use MyGen or something like that. You know, to just uh, describe the architecture in MyGen stuff and then generate Verilog and pass it to uh, to V2X. Uh, we chose V2X because V2X is something. Um, I mean, we chose Verilog because Verilog is something that most of the people are used to. Most of the simulators can handle. Most of the tools can handle. So it was way more, uh, way easier to, to start with with Verilog than, than with the rest of the uh, with different languages. But yeah, Python is I, I prefer Python than Verilog, so for me it would be way better. Uh, but Verilog was was uh, the simplest to start with. Yeah. What sort of questions? Okay, so thank you. <laughs> take the speaker again.